Hello, Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury Channel. And today I want to talk about the new Rolex C Dweller. And I got to tell you, this is a very interesting watch. This is the, the hottest watch at the moment besides the Ceramic Daytona. I believe at the moment they're selling for about 5,000 Aussie dollars over list. And uh, I very, very fortunately had one on my channel. And I wanted to talk about someone. So many people have emailed me and said, hey, what did I think of it? And I want to tell you now my opinion. What do I think of this new Sea Dweller? The 43 mil red Sea Dweller. And I've got to tell you, I think it's perfect. I think it is perfect. And what they've actually done is, is very clever. It's a bit smaller than the Deep Sea. The Deep Sea was 44 mils. But it's a lot less girthier. They've made it appear thinner. Just how they've, they've, they've done the side, sides of the case. Uh, it comes in. Um, and uh, i got to tell you, I think that may be a big winner. The um, the Sea Dweller itself there is a classic. It's one of the diving classics of all time. And Rolex has been very clever. Uh, they had the Deep Sea, which I think, you know, they were following fashion. The bigger watches, you had makers like IWC, uh, Breitling, Panerai, bringing out these big monsters. And Rolex wanted a piece of that dive watch, that super dive watch pie. And they, they're very clever. They're very clever. Rolex is one of the best luxury brands of all time. They're a business. They're actually a charity, believe it or not. They actually are a foundation. But they run the Rolex side of things uh, very much like a, a commercial enterprise. And I got to tell you, when when the 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 uh, the sea dweller came out, I was ah, uh, I was very critical of it. And uh, but now that I've actually seen one in the flesh, I've worn it, and I've uh, compared it to the other models. I think it's perfect. I actually like the forty mil sea dweller ceramic. I thought that was a really cool watch. But I think the 43 mil is absolutely perfect. Now, you've got to understand this. The whole reason for the Sea Dweller itself not having the Cyclops was because when they had the first Sea Dwellers coming out, it wasn't possible to have that Cyclops with the depth gauge, with the, the rating of the watch. So that's why it didn't have the Cyclops. When Rolex went to Sapphire in the 80s, they didn't put the Cyclops on because they were still, why change a winning formula? It's only with the advances in technology that they can now certify that the Cyclops isn't going to come off or be damaged. And this is the whole reason why Rolex has put it on. They put the Cyclops on because they now have the technology to be able to achieve it. It's not so much that the Sea Dweller has been wrecked by the addition of the Cyclops. It's that the technology didn't exist in the past to allow it to go so deep with a Cyclops on. So as technology has improved, they've now made that addition. Now, I think the Cyclops is a very good thing. It's a good thing because it makes the date a hell of a lot more readable. When you're in your 40s and your eyesight starts to go down, that is a really big plus. So the actual, um, the actual... Cyclops itself, I think, is a good thing. It is a very good thing. The other interesting thing Rolex has done is they've 
introduced, reintroduced the red, the red writing. And this shows you that Rolex is, 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 is keeping an eye on the auction market and the vintage collectible market. And who can blame them? Bringing back that red writing, what a clever idea, especially as the red writing versions of vintage watches are so much more valuable than the white writing. So I think that is a very clever, very clever thing for Rolex to do. The question being asked is, is Rolex going to do that for a limited time or for a long time? That is an, that's, that's the $64 million question. Are they going to do it just as a quick fad? Do it on the first couple of years of production? Or are they going to keep it there? No one really knows. And uh, I think the best thing to do is say nothing. Say nothing. Rolex is very, very clever at that. Interestingly enough, collectors go crazy for the red writing sea dwellers of old. So this is a very inexpensive way to really set the cat amongst the pigeons. The other thing Rolex has done is they've gone to 43 mil, but it's lost the girth of the deep sea. So this piece here, even though it is fairly similar to the deep sea in size, the case tapers in a lot sooner than on the deep sea. This makes the watch not appear as big as the deep sea very clever idea and i think they got it right i honestly think they've got it right so the question is what do i think of this sea dweller this new red 43 mil cyclops sea dweller i think it's absolutely perfect that's right i think it is perfect I think it's a very clever watch and it's it's very very hot at the moment uh, selling for a big premium if you can get one very very um, desirable type of piece and I think the future who knows what the future will hold it's uh, the thing is the deep seas I gotta tell you this they have softened in price and in demand but as soon as rolex stops producing the deep sea you can be assured it'll go up i think it could be a possible definite win that could be a definite win you buy a deep sea whilst they're cheap and soft and then once it's stopped once production stops which seems very likely they should go through the roof in price. The Sea Dweller itself, what a fantastic idea. The Red Sea Dweller. What a fucking amazing way to do things. And i got to tell you, I think the size, the proportions, I think the watch is perfect. The biggest, the biggest bugbear is that cycle. And I think you've got to understand the technology didn't exist before to allow it. So it's not so much that they wanted the original Sea Dweller to be no Cyclops. It's that the technology didn't allow it. It's a very interesting watch. If you're after a diver, I mean, I personally don't buy new. I like to buy things on the secondary market. In that regard, the deep sea is probably a good buy at the moment. However, however, the new red sea dweller, if they change to white in the coming years, those red ones will soar in price. That is one thing you can be assured of. I'm Paul Pluter on the Archie Luxury Channel. Tell me what you fuckers think of that. Cut. We specialize in the repair of Rolex and Patek Philippe watches. We've been doing the same thing for more than 25 years. 
We have a Rolex technician certified by Rolex who actually used to work for the company for many years, like if we do in the work at the factory. We completely disassemble the watch and we put it to work, like brand new condition. When you get a pre-owned watch, it's like if you get in a brand new unit. The only difference is the money. Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury channel, and today we're discussing Super Rolex Drivers. We're talking Sea Dweller. And uh, I gotta tell you, the ultimate diver in the Rolex range is the Deep Sea! And let's compare these here. We've got all the models, the major iterations of Sea Dweller here. And uh, I gotta tell you, look at this here. This is the big daddy, the deep sea, the deep sea. Look at the size of this baby. And uh, I'm just gonna compare it, compare it to the current 43 mil. So can you see just a, a slight size there? Now we're gonna also compare it to the last, these are all, these are three ceramics. Look at this here, this is the the 40 mil, the 43, and the 44 deep sea. What do you reckon? What do you reckon? Indeed, indeed, indeed. What do you reckon there? So it's a, it's a magic collection. The ultimate divers collection here. Look at this here. Look at the watches. What do you think? What do you think? It's... Um, very fascinating to have a look at these big divers, these divers.